Okay, so this is the final of the three example reports. Um, and again, this is a, a step up in terms of the quality from the previous two. So when we look at the title, we're determining the concentration of drug X in patient blood. So it's a very clear title. It says exactly what the experiment is going to do. So we know that we're measuring the amount of drug X in patient blood. To improve that title, you could possibly add in a, a small element of why you're actually measuring it. But that's actually still a very strong title. So you'll probably get about four out of the five marks. With the aims, we now know why we're measuring this drug concentration. So we know we want to try and hit a therapeutic threshold of 10 nanograms per milliliter without exceeding a toxic dose of 16 nanograms per milliliter. So this student has actually defined the levels and why they are important and what's going to be looked at in the experiment. And we also now know that drug X is a newly developed drug which is under investigation for the treatment of a disease. And the student has provided an in-text citation here. And if I scroll down, we can see the student at the end has provided a reference list which matches that citation. So when we talk about the references, we have it correctly referenced in the text and we have the correctly referenced at the end of the documents. So this student would pick up marks for referencing. If this were an actual lab report, I would hope that there would be more than just one reference present. But as an example of what is actually needed for referencing, this is uh, sufficient. So the student would get marks. With the results, we now have a sl uh, an introductory text. So we know that a standard curve was generated from known concentrations of this drug. And we know that we then use that to determine the concentration of the drug in the patients. So we have a little bit of a narrative here about what was actually done and why it was done. Looking at the table, we have a clear legend. So the absorbance readings are 500 nanometers, and we know that it's drug X. So this is a good uh, figure legend. When we look at the table, all of the data is provided to a consistent number of decimal places. We have the mean and the standard deviation calculated. So the data is complete. I would question whether or not we actually need this first line. So do we need to actually report that the blank is zero? I would say not. If you're not, it, the blank basically sets the machine to zero. So you don't need to actually provide that information in the table. But that would be nitpicking because everything else is fine. Again, with the second table, we know we have the absorbances at 500 nanometers in four patients. We have complete data all to a consistent level of decimal places. Where the student is going to lose marks slightly is that we don't know what the units of concentration are. So it would be good to have the fact that they are uh, nanograms per milliliter actually in the table headings for the concentration and for the mean. And we could also put the wavelength for each one of these readings or above these readings to show that it's actually 500 nanometers. But other than that, those tables are actually fairly complete and we'll probably pick up about 12 of the marks available out of the 15. We come to the calculation and the student has said that they arranged the equation of the line to find X, which allows them to determine the concentration of the drug. They provided the equation with the rearrangement and then they give an example calculation based on this first reading here. So we can actually see the thought process of the student and how they've actually reached the values for these individual patients. So that's good. The fact they provided the units here means that they would pick up the five marks for that calculation. In terms of this standard curve, this is a good standard curve. We've lost the title from within the, uh, the graph. So we now have a figure legend which fully describes the data. So we know this is a standard curve for X from 0 to 20 nanograms per milliliter. That's good. The student then goes on to say that this is represented for three repeats and that the data that is plotted is mean plus or minus the standard deviation. So we got a full description there in the figure engine of what that figure shows. How could this be improved? Well, we don't have units for concentration on the x-axis here, so that's a little bit of a weakness. The other strength we have actually though is it has been forced through the origin. So in terms of the overall quality of that graph, that's very close to getting full marks and would just be pulled down because of that lack of a unit for the concentration on the x-axis. We then have a nice summary of uh, all the patient data. So these are the concentrations that have been provided. Again, we've got these given to a consistent number of decimal places, appropriate number of decimal places. And so this is a good table. We've got a good figure legend as well. 
and the student has chosen to represent this in an appropriate manner. So we've got the mean and the standard deviation plotted. We know that it's a concentration of drug X. Again, if nitpicking, we could say that we want the units there, so that would strengthen this figure. And we know that these are the patients across the X axis. Again, the student has actually then chosen to say that this is three repeats with the mean and the standard deviation shown. So overall, the graphs in this submission are very, very strong. There's a couple of minor omissions which would uh, lose the students a few marks, but it's a massive improvement over the first two. When we come to the discussion, we have a nice clear description of what the data actually shows with values. So we know and we have the, uh, the therapeutic threshold reiterated to us at 10 nanograms per mil with the toxic dose at 16. So it reminds us what the original aims of the experiment were. So this links the discussion back to the aims. It says that two of the patients achieved that therapeutic threshold and it gives us by how much, which is good. It tells us that patient three failed to reach that threshold again by how much and how much patient four exceeded that toxic threshold by. So the description of the results and the link back to the aims is very, very strong. There is some uh, attempt to be critical. Um, they've identified a potential weakness in the data, and they're saying that because this patient is so close to that therapeutic threshold, it would be worth repeating the analysis to confirm the results. That's good. That means that the student is thinking a little bit more about what the data actually means and meant strengths and weaknesses of the data rather than just being purely descriptive. In order to improve this discussion, it would actually be quite useful for the student to say why these data are important so, and how they could be used. So we know that some of the patients are just about hitting the threshold. We know some of them are exceeding it. Why is that important? And the student could talk about how different patients are affected differently by the drugs and therefore there's not a consistent threshold so that if these drugs were to be used therapeutically then it would be important to monitor the levels in the blood that would add just a little bit of extra critical analysis to this discussion and would strengthen that discussion but overall i would say that discussion would probably pick up somewhere around about 20 out of the 30 marks available and if they added that extra element that would strengthen it We've already discussed the reference here, so we've got a fully correctly formatted reference. So for the purposes of this report, the student will pick up the 10 references. As you can see, the quality of this report is much, much higher. There's a lot more detail contained within it. The graphs are nicely presented. The student's taken that extra effort just to make sure that everything has been uh, covered. And this report would achieve a high first. So we'd be probably looking somewhere around about 75 to 80 percent mark for this. So now that you've actually seen the three videos uh, and you've looked at the way that I've used this mark scheme to actually inform uh, the feedback and on, on these reports, hopefully you'll be able to now, when you come to do your own reports, you'll be able to remember some of the things and make sure that you actually incorporate these into your own lab reports.